how we start it. Uh, actually, Bakhti had asked me in any case to record because she wasn't sure if she would be able to join. Um, uh, Abhishek, I don't know if you know, but Bakhti is the principal of the Prakriti yes, School. I, yeah, where uh, I, I Jill and Vinit work. Yeah, okay. So she asked yes. me to record it. I hope you don't have any objections. I think no, in no any case, I was going to suggest it because obviously it then means you have it. So you can go back over anything, which is a lot easier right. than trying to take notes at the same time. Um, so if you're all okay with that, then we'll carry on with the recording. Um, yeah, sure. Now, as I said in the email, I was just chatting with the, with the other two. Um, we're going to start first with your document, because that was actually how this evolved. You know, Ulrika asked me if yes. I would have a look at your document for you, which I did. And you'll already have noticed some of the corrections, I'm sure, that yes. I made. Or, corrections is not the right word. Some of the things I chose to change. <laughs> Let's put change. it like that. Yeah. Um, uh, because, you know, in any learning process, I don't think there's necessarily a... It's not about corrections. It's not about saying you were wrong or something wasn't right. It's just about a different way, perhaps, of doing things. And you will also have noticed that... Um, I called your column assessment, which is what assessment. it is, and then I put in an evaluation column afterwards. And then yes. further to that, if you wish, we can put in a feedback column. So what I'm now going to do, I hope, is I'm going to share a screen with you all, I hope. Um, let's see if I can do this. I'm not quite sure which tab I've got open. Um, might just be this one. So I'll probably need to open another tab, but um, uh, multiple participants can share. That's the one we want. And then we want, okay, and we want this one. I hope this is your one. Let me see. Um, all right, that's good. Okay, I've got it up, but for some reason, you're not seeing it, are you? No. Are you seeing the screen? No. Not as yet. No, no, okay. So let me try again. Uh, let's put this back up. There we go. All right, okay. Share. Ah, okay. Now... We should have it. We don't want that. We want this one. That's it. Okay. Good. Right. Now you should have it. Yeah. Can you all see the screen now? Yes. Good, good, good. Yes. yes. Okay, super. Right. So this is Abhishek's document. Um, sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Am I? Yes. Good. Okay. You are. <laughs> Thank you. Never too sure with names. That's a dangerous ground, names. Yes. Um, so this is a learning program um, for computer basics, is, is the way I would describe it, yeah? Um, and it's going to take place over a number of months with a number of sessions. So actually, we're not interested in the time period and we're not necessarily interested in the specific title of the topic. We know it's about computers. So what we're interested to start looking at is are the learning outcomes, okay? Um, learning outcomes, learning objectives, learning criteria, it really doesn't matter what you call them. I like learning outcomes because that the phrase indicates that there is going to be no. Uh, a modicum of learning that is the result of all your teaching. <laughs> it's a hard work. <laughs> so that's why I quite like that one. But, um, you know, the, the choice is up to you. It's a good idea to check when you share the document with your students. It's a good idea to check first before sharing any learning plan that they understand the, um, uh, the anachronyms or just simply the vocabulary that you might use in the learning plan. So, you know, actually, are your students really aware of what a learning objective outcome criteria, what, what it is? Do they actually know what it is? You know, or do, do they just think it's something that 
is going to be a test for them or whatever yeah so it's a good idea to share them with them share it with them first we sometimes assume that students actually have a lot more educational general knowledge than they might than they might actually have so here is the first one i have slightly rephrased these and abhishek i may in one or two cases if i have incorrectly rephrased the objective that you want then, then do by all means say because as i say you know my area is actually language and english in particular and so um, i uh, i wouldn't be trying to frame learning objectives in computer understanding i'm usually asking for computer help yeah. um, so it's, but i've yeah. rephrased them so that they are um, in in the English structure English. of how we phrase a learning objective. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. I'm assuming that you're teaching in English, but you might be teaching in Hindi. Um, in both, actually. Uh, okay. some, in some cases, when he understands in Hindi, yeah. I choose Hindi. I okay. choose Hindi yeah. as the language. And uh, uh, so we are working with the Anil. Uh, 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 He's not very good in English, and uh, the uh, the things like uh, the uh, economics and uh, the subjects are very new to him. So we make him understand in Hindi as well, and then connect with the English. So oh, first we okay. give the Hindi vocabulary, then uh, give the English vocabulary to make him uh, understand the thing in the right context. As Aaron's English teacher, I would suggest if you want to help his English at the same time that you do it the other way around you yeah, actually yeah. you you work in the English and where he doesn't understand then you can ask him if he can make the connection to the Hindi and if he can't then obviously you can work it for him in the Hindi the first thing um, it, it it's always difficult. I mean, I, I've taught and headed up many bilingual schools and there's always this argument about which way round you do it. You're, you have to decide actually whether your priority is going to be um, the, the language that you want the student to learn or whether it's going to be the actual topic that you're teaching. Now, obviously for me, I don't have that issue because I'm teaching him English. So actually yeah. the topic I'm teaching and the language I want him to learn yeah. happen to nicely coincide. Um, but it, it is a real issue and it is something that you need to be clear in your own heads because if actually the first priority for these students, whoever they are, this happens to be Aaron, but the principle applies in any case, yeah. at yes. priority generally, if the first priority is that they need to be able to be fluent in a second or subsequent language, then actually every lesson, whatever the topic of the lesson, becomes first a lesson in that language. Yeah? Yes. And yes. that way, the students will actually advance a lot more quickly in that focus language than they will otherwise. Um, a student will never be bi or multilingual if they're always translating. That cannot happen. I mean, you are three people who are, I'm sure, multi. I'm sure you have more languages than just Hindi and English. And you probably have a, a home language that is other than Hindi as well, at least. And you may have other European languages too. So you will know that actually you cannot work in another language. Even you can't listen to somebody speaking if you're actually all the time trying to translate. It doesn't work. And you only need one or two key words in what they're saying or in what you're reading and you, that you don't understand and you lose the plot completely. And then you've actually lost a whole section of their conversation or the lecture or the film or whatever it is. And it's very difficult then to catch up. So that's the first thing that I would suggest to you. Um, you know, if you are a single tutor working with a student, then you perhaps need to talk a bit around with the student. You maybe need to talk with other people if your course, like Abhishek, is teaching outside of the Prakriti school context. But clearly, you're not the only person working with Aaron. You might want to speak with Aaron, with Ulrika, with other people involved, so that as a group of tutors who are working with the student, you make key decisions about the nature and context that your, your teaching is embedded in. It's a framework. 
because you are not just teaching one student uh, by themselves. Now, when I do language teaching, whether it's uh, virtual or in, in reality, if I've got them you know, in the same room with me, um, generally speaking, it is just in that context. It is just in the context of the student wanting to learn the language. But none of you are working in that context. And now, in a sense, I'm not either, because I'm part of the team that we, we seem to be together now, all working with Aaron. So we're like his private school. Yeah. No, actually, actually uh, Nicola, I yeah. am kind of working in that context because right. uh, Anil and I, um, we uh, work, I work on his English. I work with him for English. Right. So, uh, yeah, we don't speak a word of Hindi while we are in, no. in Sydney. Okay, well, yeah. I, don't, I didn't realize he had another English teacher as well. Obviously, I don't speak Hindi with him either because I don't speak Hindi. He doesn't speak any of the other languages that I speak, so we have to work in English. <laughs> but that is the objective. I mean, um, yes. I was asked by Ulrika to work with him uh, you know, as an English tutor, so that's what I've been doing. Um, but... Um, there are now other people working with Anil. Are, um, you two working with Anil, not Aaron? Uh, sorry, Vineet and... Uh, I would oh, say you're uh, working with Anil, yes? Yes. 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 And um, uh, Vineet, you're working with Anil? Yeah. Yeah. So, so actually, we are now a team because we're all working with Anil. So actually, we are not any longer just responsible for what Anil is learning, we also have a responsibility actually as a team of tutors working with that student, yeah? yeah, yeah so yes. um, in that context, um, there really should be, you know, once a month or whatever, there should be some sort of team meeting and there should be issues that are decided. Like, for example, I see that he's got two tutors for English, now, I, mean, I had no idea that Sushil was working with Anil in English. I have no idea what he's teaching him. You know, so already there's a potential conflict there that actually we may either be teaching him the same things or teaching um, in a way that is actually not helpful for Anil because the, the way we are teaching isn't compatible for him to understand. Or all, all sorts of things could arise there. So really, Sushil, you and I should at some point have a conversation Absolutely. Absolutely. about what you and I are doing. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, because of course, you know, there are, there are um, obviously issues that I'm aware of now having worked with Anil for a couple of months um, in mm -hmm. his English, and it may be that you're working on those and so on. So we, between us, we make a plan. So we're not actually just going over the same thing, but we're also supporting the teaching that each of us are doing. Right, let's make a plan. Yeah, in the context of the fact that Anil has two English tutors, I would suggest that whoever is pulling the strings on this, and I'm not sure if that's Bakhti or Ulrika, but I'm suggesting Ulrika. it's Ulrika, yeah, I'm suggesting it's Ulrika. I would then perceive that she considers English to be the most important. Yeah, uh, she does, yeah. Right, okay, in that context then, we can already say that actually the most important thing is for his English. So. Mm -hmm. From that standpoint, we, we should, those of us who, counts me out, but the three, the three of you who speak Hindi should be very aware that actually, although your topic might be business studies or it might be computing, your first, the first thing you're teaching is English because actually your lesson is in English. So every yeah. lesson is an English lesson. You use the Hindi to help and support the English and to give him hooks to hang his English on, not the other way around. You don't yes. use the, um, the English to give him hooks to hang his Hindi understanding of it on. It's the, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. So you yourselves need to be very confident with your English in the subject that you're teaching. Yeah? You need to be absolutely sure that you have all the... Um, uh, Right vocabulary? Yeah, the specialist. That's the word I was looking for. The specialist vocabulary mm -hmm. and a way to explain it in English. Yeah, because some of these words, especially with computing, they probably don't exist in Hindi anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so actually, you are going to need him to understand in English. And you will know yourselves 
there are some things that you don't bother with other languages for. There are some things that only work in a particular mm. language. Yeah? Um, yeah. I know that I have some things that are, for example, in, in uh, modern Ivrit, in Hebrew, that um, they just don't exist in any other language. Yeah, I mean. And I will use that word and people will look at me and I'll say, I'm sorry, it's the right word. It means like a chaos or a muddle, but it's a fabulous word. You know? <laughs> so I, sort of, I, I anglicize it and I, it becomes um, my, my English Hebrew word or whatever. But there are things that you learn in the language you're learning them in. And actually that's really important, yeah? Sure. And then, for example, later on in his life, if Anil wishes, to teach um, computing uh, to a group of students and he's actually teaching it in Hindi. The objective has nothing to do with English language. It's the objective is all of just about the computing and it's in Hindi. Then it's his job as a teacher to actually make sure that when he gets to these uh, special, specialist vocabulary that is only in English, he teaches it in English, but makes the connection so they can understand it in, in Hindi. Mm -hmm. So the words will probably always be in English. You'll probably always be talking about system preferences and uploading and downloading, whatever, in English, but understanding it in the Hindi. Does that make sense? Yes, completely. Okay. So looking at the learning outcomes, Abhishek, that you've got here, um, data entry operations is the first topic. And then um, we've got four learning outcomes, understanding the basics. Now there is a computer program called BASIC, and I wasn't sure if you were referring to that or if you were just talking about basics of computer systems. Basics of computer, basics. Okay, in which case, um, I probably can't do anything to this now. Oh, I can, wow. Um, no, yes, I can, amazing. In this case, then basics takes a small b, yeah? yeah? because you're not talking about That's the language. computer program called BASIC. And actually, I think that in that computer program, the B, the letters actually each stand for something. Yes. But I have no idea what. So, <laughs> um, so to understand the basics of, so I still need to be back in this, of data of the, of data entry. And you don't need system now. You actually don't no. need system, yeah? You can even write da basics of computer. You could write to understand the basics of computers. Computer. But uh, did you want it to be these specific functions in this lesson for this topic? Uh, actually, it's the whole, uh, the whole subject, the, the entry operation. Okay. So how subject. long is this lesson we're looking at here? Uh, three months. This one lesson is three months. No. This is the whole subject. Ah, Actually, okay. the whole sub this so, is the whole timeline. So this topic, data entry, is a three-month topic. Uh, sorry, yes. this topic, data entry operations, is a three-month topic. Yes. It's the whole okay. timeline of the subject. I'm right. teaching. I'm teaching you okay. for three so, months. So let me understand then, because I think I'm then not understanding your plan. Um, the topic for the three month course is data entry operations. Okay, right. I, I'll, just, I, I'll just be clear. Ulrika wanted to create this in first, the whole subject. How much time will it take? What will be the learning outcomes? And what will be the material? And then the evaluation. Then to huh? break it down it into the months. Then one month will okay. do this. One so month. Underneath this, you've broken it down into the months. Yes. Right. Okay. So these are the learning outcomes for the entire topic. Yes. Got yeah. So, okay. uh, so uh, data entry operation is a, uh, uh, is a name of the subject which he is teaching, and this is the overall objective. Uh, 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 overall objective of the book, right, yeah. Abhishek? Yes. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get that. So. Um, now then, of course, you can change your learning outcomes. Now, I don't think it's necessarily, we obviously need to take the time to necessarily change your learning outcomes here, but you're right when you say, it could now say, the first learning outcome you wish from the course. We're now talking about the learning outcomes for the course. Yes. Yeah? So the first one might be to understand to have a basic understanding of computer operations, for example. 
yeah, yeah. or of, com of computer systems yeah because yes. as you say it's now an overall yeah yeah the second one to to understand document management because formatting and texting would come into that management. yeah for example yeah so we've got here overview learning outcomes yeah yes the first is how computers work the second is how documents work and documentation the third is spreadsheets Spreadsheet work. and the fourth is uh, presentations um, yes yeah so actually what you've got is um, we all have the, all the three things come under MS office like which is uh, contain the sheet documents uh, uh, presentation as a slideshow so it's uh, we can categorize under the MS office is it Abhishek we can categorize, but uh, here she is just talking about the learning outcomes that we can uh, create the broad learning outcomes. Yeah, I am. am. I right? And actually, okay. there may be students who aren't using Office. So you might actually want to talk about the general management of documents yeah. within computer systems. Um, and then you might later on, you might break that down and say, well, Office is one. Um, open open office is another one there's several of them again I'm not a computer person but I know most people use office but for example Apple doesn't if you're in an yes. Apple which I'm in at the moment um, you have to have office as an app if you want to use it so um, yeah I'll be sure I take your point so what you've got here is your topic for the course data entry operations and then within that you've got four overall learning objectives which are to understand the basics of computers how they work to understand documentation and all that goes with that to understand spreadsheets and all that goes with that um, and again you've got of course um, cloud you know people a lot of people use documentation in cloud for example or spreadsheets in cloud yeah. another system you might look at um, and then the fourth one is understanding the creation of presentations, um, uh, which might be PPPs if you're using the Office Suite, but it might be something else. Yeah? Yes. Does that make sense for you? Yes, completely. And is that your aim? Have we got it right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I understand that uh, we have to create broad, uh, broad outcomes in this yep. one. Yeah. We're talking about the whole subject. Exactly, because then you're going to go on and break those down. Okay. Yes. Let's look at the assessment for that. Um, so what I took from what you had was that, oh, by the way, there's no, well, yeah, I was about to say there's no such thing as a mock exam. Of course, there is a mock exam. But in this context, I cannot see why you would want a mock exam. A mock exam is something that gives students the opportunity to actually try out um, an exam in examination conditions to get a feel for working to time, to get a feel for the context the questions are going to be set in, to, to understand what it's like normally to sit in an examination room with maybe 50 other students. Obviously now it might be virtual, but still, that if it's a virtual exam, then certain conditions have got to be in place i.e. they can't cheat because they're sitting at home, you know, whatever. They haven't got a, a crib sheet in front of them where you can't see it, you know. <laughs> um, at, bef prior to them sitting the real exam. I don't think that's what you intend. No, I, no, I, I, so therefore, I changed these for exam. And there is always a place um, in an assessment uh, parcel, if you like, for exam or for testing. The testing is just another word for exam. It usually means something that's not quite so heavy. An exam is usually a bit heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe the outcome is a bit more serious, but you know, a test or exam. So what I changed it to was a theoretical and practical mm -hmm. exam. Yeah? Yes. So he need, you need to know that actually he has understood those four broad concepts and can answer some broad questions about them in a test and that also you can give him online practical tasks um, that will actually show that he can do these things as well as just uh, understanding them cerebrally he can actually do them as well yeah yes yeah, yeah. okay um, now we're going to talk about assessment evaluation and feedback and the difference yes. 
between them afterwards. So all I did was just to create you an evaluation column here, <laughs> because yes. it, you had put assessment as evaluation and, and it's not, yeah? Okay, so now we go on to your breakdown of your course. Now I come back to my question, is each one of these under topic, we've got, under the first one, we've got three items. Are they in one lesson or is that one lesson per item? Uh, yeah, in the basics of computer, the first one, learning outcome is for the first topic. Right, so, so the basics of computer is one lesson. Yes. Okay, operating system is another lesson. Yes. And, right, okay. uh, and these are what, an hour are they? Or a couple of hours? How long are these lessons? So, uh, uh, may I request you to uh, uh, show the uh, column number A as well? Just before this? Nicola? Yeah, August, September, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you see the month, the entire month, he will cover these three chapters. Yes, yes, I get that, Vineet. But I wasn't sure if he was covering them in one lesson, which you know, could be, for example, three hours, an hour each, running straight okay. on, or if he was covering them in separate lessons. Yeah. In separate because, lessons. Yeah, okay, because the way you laid your plan out, actually, I would think, I would possibly assume that in August, this was the lesson that you were delivering in some way. Yeah, it's fine. You understand it. And that's what's important. Yeah. But yes. if anybody else is trying to understand it, it's probably easier to put August and then underneath the date of each lesson and then what you're covering in each lesson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, lesson one, basics of computer, the learning outcome for that to understand how a computer is organized, including input and output devices and system software. No. I don't know if I've actually got the nitty gritty of what you want in that learning outcome, but can you see how I phrased it? Yes, I yeah? saw how you phrased it. It's right, actually. Yeah. Um, a learning outcome is always an understanding um, or uh, a being able to. Yeah. Yes. It has to be phrased in that way. Yeah. It's not an yes. evaluation of and it's not a feedback. It's quite specifically, you are teaching the basis of computer and you want the student to understand that X, Y, and Z, yeah? I am, you know, uh, pontificating on uh, teaching programs and how to lay them out. And I want you to understand from that that there is a clearer way of laying out a learning program than perhaps you had done before, yeah? Yes. So uh, a learning outcome is always an understanding, understanding of something. Yeah. And it's always from the perspective of the student. Always. It's what, well, it's what you want the student to understand, not what the student wants to understand. <laughs> yes. Now that could be totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And very often there is a clash there, which is why I say you need to be very clear because the first thing you do when you meet your students or student, however many, the very first thing you do is you go through with them, first of all, what the course plan is with its objectives, which are your learning outcomes, yeah? Yes. And with, its success, with its assessment criteria. And then you ask them, okay, is this what you thought it was going to be? Because if actually then they all say, well, no, actually we thought it was going to be you know, how do you blow up a balloon and send it into our space? Well, uh, there's something wrong at the beginning and you don't want to waste your time or theirs. Obviously, I'm being a little bit facetious. It's not going to be that disparate. But very often you do find that there is disparity between what you are planning as the course and what the students think they're getting. So you need to be very clear about that at the very beginning. I'm not, of course, suggesting that you then should change your course because the students are saying they thought they were getting something different. You just say to them, well, sorry, guys. I mean, this is the course. This is what I'm delivering. Like it or lump it. If it's not what you want, go away and find another course. But, you know, even if it's not what you thought it was, you're very welcome to stay and participate. And who knows? You may actually learn something. <laughs> you may find you didn't know it all. <laughs> you might learn something. Yeah? Yeah, learn something, um, yes. But it's very good to come together with your students at the beginning of the whole course. 
and just put it to them first. Make them write it down or send them a copy of it. Ideally, email them first of all, you know, the, the, the whole course layout, the yeah. concept for the course, the overall objectives for the course, and then the lesson by lesson breakdown. Yeah? Yes. I think they will also have a better understanding then. They will. They'll have a better understanding and hopefully they'll come to each lesson actually maybe even a little bit prepared. Yes. You know, because actually um, a reversed or upside down classroom is also a very good thing, excuse me, a very good thing when you're working remotely. Yes. It can be a very good thing when you're not working remotely. But to say to the students, okay, uh, our next session is on operating systems. I want you to go away and actually do a bit of work. Find out all you can about operating systems. The first five minutes of our lesson will be you telling me what you know about operating systems. Yeah. Number yeah. one, it empowers them to actually start um, independent learning skills and working and, and showing that they can do that. You know, because in the situation that's going on here, actually, Anil and others like him must develop independent learning skills. They're not going to get anywhere without it. Yes. Uh, and it gives you an opportunity to see how interested are they? How much time have they bothered to spend on it? What are they bringing to the table? Are they actually really interested in this? Or have they just said, oh, sorry, I didn't really have time, you know, um, I had to teach the children how to wash their hands, or I had to, or I had to, or I had to. Yeah. yeah. All of which may well be true, but there's always time in the day for something if you want to do it. It's just yeah. how you organize your day and your time. Yeah. yeah. So and, uh, um, it gives you a good insight to the student. Yeah. Yes. And when we have an insight, like if they are not interested, how can we make them interested? How can we uh -huh. make them? Yes. Well, there you go. How can you? Yeah, that's a completely different uh, <laughs> course <laughs> for me to give. <laughs> But basically, you can take, there's a, a very nice saying that's in several languages. In English, it goes, you can take the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Yeah? Yes. Do you yes. understand that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, um, if you actually find that the student isn't interested in what you are supposed to be teaching them, um, you've really got two options. One is to stop teaching it, because actually they're not going to learn. They will not learn. You know, and it doesn't matter. You can argue from here, you know, until the end of the world, to be honest. If the person you are teaching does not want to learn, they will not learn. It is as simple as that. There will be mo no mindset whereby they will listen, understand, accept, and take on board what you are teaching them because they, they are closed. They don't want to learn. The second is to try to find within your subject a hook that actually will interest them. So you need to start to talk to them. You need to start to get to know them. You need to find out what it is they do want to learn and why they want to learn that, what it is they want to do, why they want to do it, you know, where they're coming from. And 99 times, or maybe 90, let's not be too over here, but 90 times out of 100, once they start talking and you engage in a conversation with them, it may take a little while, but you will suddenly they'll say something and you'll think that's it. And you'll say, do you know what? In what you've just said, let me suggest to you. Now, if you actually are really interested in doing this, might I suggest that if you were able to actually show this and this and this, and then for example, you could do this amazing presentation would you don't think that might actually interest your student a bit more or give you a better chance of getting the job or, or whatever it is? And hopefully you'll have struck the chord and made the link and they'll go, yes. Then, of course, it's your skill to make sure that everything you teach them holds that interest. And even the things that, that they think they probably never need to know, you teach it from that perspective so you're holding their interest. Yeah? Makes yeah, sense? Makes, makes sense. Uh, there will always be some students who you just won't get. It's as simple as that, you know. There'll always be some students who don't want to be students. And at the end of the day, you know, it's like everything, to be honest, Abhishek. It's like, um, you know, if you are addicted to something, you know, it doesn't matter how much people tell you, until you hit rock bottom with your addiction, 
and actually want yourself to stop it because it's ruining your life or you thought about killing yourself or whatever, till you get to that point, the nada of it, um, you won't actually start what, being stop interested it. in giving it up. Yeah? And it's exactly the same with education. Um, you know, and until you are actually interested to learn something, you won't learn. Yes. Okay, so to come back to your number one is fine, number two, operating systems, to understand and manage files in Windows, system settings, soft and hardware installation. Again, there's a range there of different um, soft and hardware that people might be using, not just Windows. Windows is one, but there could be many others. Yeah, again, you would need to adjust that if I haven't interpreted it quite right. And yes. again, the third one, understand. Um, screen layouts, document management, and protection. Yeah. Also, perhaps how people can get around protection. So things like passwords, and especially today, we seem to be in a rash of everybody in Russia wants to know about what I'm doing. No, everybody in Russia probably doesn't want to know about what you're doing, but nevertheless, it's good to be aware. Um, so, um, yeah, you okay with that? Yes. Good, okay. Then your, uh, for September, formatting text, basics of spreadsheet, formatting worksheets. Um, again, I've not been terribly thorough here. I was looking at this quite quickly. Um, you, you should customize your um, titles, either, ideally, formatting text should both start with capitals, yeah? Yes. It's just tidy. It's just neat. And again, don't forget you're presenting something in English to your student for whom English is an additional language. So he's actually seeing that. He will reproduce that and he will think, oh, it's okay to do that. Well, it's not that it's wrong, but it actually doesn't look good if you were presenting this you know, to uh, somebody like myself, I would say, oh, that looks a bit messy. He should either have it all in capitals or all in lowercase. And in this case, all in capitals. And the, the um, connectives don't need to be in capitals. So your of is quite right, that's fine. But your text, I should have put into capitals. So yeah. formatting and a capital T for text. Formatting and workshops, the capital W for workshops. Yeah, makes sense? Yes, I understand. Yes. And actually that's why I left all my use for understanding in lowercase, because I just made the decision that I was going to have lowercase for all the bullet points and not start them with capital letters. Also, you'll notice I haven't put any full stops. That's again, my choice. When I'm using bullet points, I prefer not to have full stops at the end because they're not sentences. So a full stop doesn't make any sense there. You know, grammatically speaking, these aren't sentences, they're bullet points. When you write a shopping list, you don't put a bullet point after toilet paper. Why would you? Yeah. It, it's just a list of things. And this is the same. It's just a list of things. They don't need full stops. Um, so again, yes. understanding how to format page and text, create lists and tables, understand the use of, of the, there you'll need to change that because it's not basic, yes. the program, mm -hmm. it's the basics of programming. programming. Yeah, what, whatever you want there. Okay. Understand how to format. Mm -hmm. And then you've just given some, particular things that are going to be in that lesson and that's great because that tells the student exactly the items that you're going to be covering in that one hour lesson yeah, yeah. so that's very good i would encourage you to break down the other um uh, learning objectives in that way if it makes sense for that lesson yeah so yes. understanding the basics of programming with a worksheet if you can itemize the things that you will cover, that that means you'll be covering. It also means that you can tell your student to go away and have a look at those things before the lesson. Before the lesson. Yeah, because it's itemized very clearly what it is he should know. Also, it gives an opportunity for the student at the start of the lesson to say, actually, um, for example, here, toolbar, cells, rows, columns, whatever, your, your student can say to you, do you know what? Abhishek, I, I think I really understand toolbar formatting. I know how to recreate or to format my own toolbar, how to take things in and out of toolbar. Let's say, for example, in office um, spreadsheets. Yeah. So then yeah. you can say, oh, that's great. Okay, we don't need to do that. Time saved. Yeah. 
Yes. You never want, as a general thought, you never want to be teaching students what they already know. And if you don't ask them what they already know, you don't know what they already know. <laughs> yes. So again, uh, once you've introduced uh, what, your, what your session for today is going to cover. So we talked about introducing the overview at the beginning of the course. Each session should also start with an overview of that specific session. Okay. Hi, yes. hi guys and girls, you know, this is what we are doing today. You know, we're, this is now session four. Do, do you listen to podcasts, serializations or anything like that? Uh, podcasts, a few. not okay. Serials. Often. So you'll yes, know yes. that at the beginning of each podcast, they'll say, um, welcome to Hedge Cutting. This is the third podcast in this series. We've previously looked at X, Y and Z. Today we're looking at A. Yeah. Yes. And that's an excellent way to start your lesson each individual lesson. Okay, guys and girls, well, this is, you know, the third lesson in our topic of whatever it is. <laughs> and um, as you know, we've already covered X and Y. Today, we're looking at cells, rows and columns. Right, let's start by, tell me, what do you know about cells, rows and columns? And meanwhile, you've got your private crib sheet, your, pr your private planning sheet, not this, your detailed planner mm -hmm. with your detailed notes on. And if they say A and N and O, you're crossing them out. So you don't cover them again in your lesson. Yes. Yeah, because there is nothing more deadly boring to a student than being taught something you know. Yes. Really, yeah? Yeah, I understand. Okay. So that's fine. Then we come on to your um, October session. Those are the things you're going to cover. And here again are your, um, your assessments for each one. Again, you've actually broken all of these down, which is great. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, super. Now, on your very last session, Hmm. I mean, this really depends on the time, of course, on all sorts of things like who's paying you, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to get into any of that, but um, it's a really good idea if you've not got then a follow-up session where you can simply go over the entire course. Well, obviously you can't go over the entire course, but you know, what you do is you bring the student together and you say, right, okay, we're just going to go through everything that this course has covered and you will have an opportunity to ask any question about anything we've covered that we can then take five or six minutes just to go back over if you've not understood it. If you've not got a session like that, then you either need to do that in feedback, which we'll yeah. get to, or you need to design yourself in this September session only three topics to cover and leave your fourth lesson as that lesson for general feedback from your student yeah yeah or oh, uh, like uh, for every month uh, we can do once or twice these follow-up sessions so this is our class is follow -up yeah. you can certainly do that you can certainly do that and actually that would be by far the best than to leave it at the end at the end of each month, you schedule a feedback session. This is not assessment and it's not evaluation. It's feedback, a feedback session with your student. Yeah. You should also encourage your, um, your student, Anil, in this case, but you should also encourage him to actually, I mean, he should be going over, obviously, each session after the session. I assume that you will probably set some work for him to do that will require his knowledge and understanding from that session in order to be able to do it. Um, and uh, then he can obviously at that point also raise any questions or whatever he's got, you know. But you will find, if you're not careful, uh, that if you allow him to raise those questions and you answer them in the next session, you will end up having maybe only half an hour for the next session because you spent already 20 minutes or so going yeah. over the previous session yeah? Yeah. yeah now i structure my sessions with him so that actually that is the way we work you no know, i set him work he sends it to me 
and then we go through that and that's the major part of the lesson and then we continue with the topics that we're learning once we've done that so i actually see from week to week if he's applying what we're learning yeah but that's how i structure the lesson with him i don't structure all my lessons that way but that works with him yeah so again you need to to in your designing of your learning program you need to also design the way you are managing your lesson time your actual lesson time yeah so it doesn't get hijacked and you get to the end of that topic and you think, oh my goodness, how come we've not covered half of what I intended to cover? Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay, yeah. so let's look at the assessment that you've got here um, for the first month. Uh, test covering the learning topics. That's fine and that's obviously got to be done at the end of the, well, no, it hasn't. I'm saying it's obviously got to be done at the end of the month. It hasn't. You could set him, part of his homework could be a test that he does on that lesson. Yeah? yeah. Um, you know, so maybe a 20-minute test. It could be an online test if you set it like that. Or it could be something you've got to write or something that will only take him about 20 minutes to produce. You know, whatever, to produce an email to you. However you like. Yeah? So you could do it after each lesson, you could do it at the end of each topic, you could have a large exam at the end of the whole course. It really depends what you're doing. If, it's, if this is something that is going to be accredited and it's actually going to be a formal part of something that he can show, i.e. a certification, then it may be that as well as the week by week assessment, you also do want an overall exam whereby he can then show an exam certification. Yeah, he might need that, for example, if he's going to access a further college course on the basis of what he's learned with you. The college may require him to have that piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. we are a meritocracy. I know India is too. And unfortunately, that is the way that colleges and universities work. You know, okay, I want to see what proof, you know, I want That's to see your, yeah. your certifications in order to see if you've got the right certification to allow you to come onto the next course here. That's the way it works. So again, you need to know very much what he's doing this course for. If he's just doing it for the love of learning about computers, which he may well be, then that's great. Then yeah. actually, you don't necessarily need any exams as such and everything that you set him can just be for the benefit of making sure mm -hmm. that he's understood yeah yeah i i am actually he has filled an uh, open school for the open school course right so he will be giving an exam after this right. okay on this subject yeah and i want him to learn about this also the theoretical part to give the exam and to have the understanding of in the practical. Perfect. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. absolutely perfect. So then, uh, um, uh, Abhishek, it's just down to you. Again, it's part of your design of your mm -hmm. whole course. Yes? yes. How you actually want the assessment to proceed. Because the assessment is a build up and is a learning, just in the same way as your lessons are. And yes. you need to design that in the way that you want it to work. So if you want him to have a small test after each lesson on a particular part of that lesson that you know is going to be in the main exam, that's fine. You know? yes. It isn't or once a month or it's entirely how you design it, but you need to design it so that it matches the teaching and the learning that you're giving. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you cannot expect him to answer a question in a test that actually you don't cover until three lessons hence. No, that's, that's not fair. Uh, practical tests, of course, complete a range of social media practical tasks. That, because that related to what you're doing. So you might want him to be able, for example, to host a Zoom session. You might want him to be able to do a Facebook room. Uh, you might want him to be able to set up a Twitter site. You might, you might, you might need him to understand that tweets are very different to any other sort of social media. 
You know, you actually can't write an essay for a tweet. It won't work. Uh, and so on, whatever it is you want to do, yeah? Yeah. The next one we've got demonstrate creating documents using mail merge. So he's actually got to demonstrate that. So that could be in a live assessment session with you. Yes. Yeah. Or it could be something that he does and then sends you the link and you go in and have a look at it. Let, whatever. Uh, again, demonstrate the use of functions and formulas. Well, you could set him up a spreadsheet. You could give him a task. For example, he could have to produce a, um, a budget for um the the food distribution the food acquisition in in january for september or something or whatever you know mm. whatever it is yeah okay. and and then again it's up to you whether that's a live demonstration that he does with you or whether he creates it and sends you the link and so forth yeah it's, that's entirely up to you uh, presentation on a given topic well that is a presentation so whether if that's in again if you're in in the office suite that will be a ppp presentation but if you are using a some different software or whatever again up to you um how he presents it you need to give him the topic or he can suggest a topic you know if there's actually something he's doing like i know they're working with the young kids they've got a real problem at the moment down in January because the kids aren't attending lessons because they're all being required to work out in the fields. And yes, that's true. I think it was Asha actually put up on Facebook, please help us, we don't know how to get round this. And I refrained from making a reply because, of course, actually, probably the only way that will really help is if somebody comes up with a way that the adults can get round needing the help of the children in the fields. And that might be by extending their day, which won't go down very well, or it might be by bringing in help from outside January, which probably won't go down very well because I guess that would have to be paid help, you know, and so on and so forth. But actually the only way you're going to negate the use of the children is by organizing uh, the cropping in a different way so that you can actually get it done without needing these extra hands to work. Yeah? Um, and maybe they will come up with a way of reorganizing, the adults will come up with a way of reorganizing the way they work. But I suggest that probably not enough of them think that actually what the kids do is important enough. Um, and they probably think it's more important that they have to go and help in the field. So, I don't know. But I know they're having this problem at the moment. So actually it's no good, um, it's no good framing the context, contextualizing your learning outside of the experience that the student's living in. It's that that won't work either. You know, you need yeah. to be constantly making sure that you are contextualizing your learning within the framework of experience that your student is living. Yes. And, and that's constantly a problem for um, those of us from different cultures because actually we can't we all of us contextualize the learning within the framework of our own culture now i have no idea whether any of you grew up in villages like janwa i don't know but just for a moment i'm assuming you didn't and therefore you will contextualize the learning in the framework of what your background is which actually may cause that to be a barrier with your student because he just can't uh, get over that bridge now you can give him lots of help and move him across that bridge and help him, especially children who've been in Prakriti. These students have all been there. So they do have a different context that they can use, but they're at the moment embedded in Janwa very much so. So, you know, you, you need to help them to see how this is actually going to work and help them and be useful to them where they are. Um, so again, the presentation, you know, on something that, for example, they've got their own NGO now, they're going to need to raise money. So it could be a presentation that will help them raise money that they can put on Facebook, they can put on a, on a Just Giving page or that Ulrika can show when she goes to potential sponsors or whatever. So it's real, it's meaningful in that context. Make sense? Yes. Makes sense. Um, and then terminology and basics. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, obviously you want him. That has to be really 
uh, unless you're going to sit there and, and throw out all these questions, that's going to be a written test. <laughs> There's no way around that. You can, of course, design your own um, online test with the answers in. So you could do a multiple choice thing. You could actually design it and create it for him. So it's a multiple choice with obviously the right answers and the wrong answers. And maybe, you know, he can't get past that question until he's actually clicked on the right answer, whatever you want, you know, yeah. however you want to design it. Um, okay. Um, then we are in the next month, I guess, down here. Um, uh, this is uh, session wise. Yeah. Uh, I've broken down into it session wise. Okay. Assessment. okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if you are understanding those uh, changes that I made, then we don't need to go through them one by one. Yes, I've understood actually, and uh, I've understood the learning outcomes. They are pretty clear. And uh, I just wanted to understand evaluation. Yeah. How okay. We... We'll, we'll, okay. We'll move on then. So do you, um, I don't mean to be rude, Abhishek, I'm not being rude, but do you understand the use of my word differentiate? Uh, yes. You do? Okay, fine, 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 fine. Please excuse me, but I need to be sure. Otherwise, you know, I've left a gap and it was something you might not understand. Um, differentiating is also a good way of uh, assessing. Assessing. Yeah. Particularly, it's, it's, it's not so good for language, but it's very good for computing. <laughs> yeah, and possibly for business studies as well. There are different aspects of business studies that need to be differentiated. It's very good for finance and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, great. Super. Right. Um, okay. Well, I will, if you're happy with that, yeah, then I yes. will move on. I'm going to put this up. Um, if it's here, let me know. Go away. I don't want that. Oh, you can tell I'm not able to. I don't want that. Uh, I know I'm on screen sharing. Um, no. I want this, I think. Good. It is still there. Great. Okay. Now, I just um, sort of put this together very quickly from, you know, as we all do. You know, I looked here, I looked there, I, wherever, and I just brought this together just to give you some basic statement about each thing, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Assessment is the process of gathering information in order to make a determination about a student's learning. Evaluation is the process of judging or putting a value, evaluation, putting a value on a procedure, the degree to which knowledge has been gained or the degree to which a skill has been acquired. Feedback is a method of providing information about a student's learning or skill acquisition in order to plan future learning goals and to ameliorate behavior and skills. Yeah, um, ameliorate in this sense, uh, not meaning to actually that the student has been misbehaving and you want to try and make the behavior better, but um, to ameliorate, to make better, to improve in the general sense of improve behavior. Yeah. Well, well, to improve on what they've got. So yeah. the, within the feedback, you know, they are talking about X, Y, and Z, and you need to ameliorate that to make sure that it is the best it can be. Yeah. As, uh, in, as, as in if they uh, understand a method of learning better, we need to improve on that. Yeah. Maybe yes. That. Yes. And this is also here when we come to talk about them separately in a moment, I will add here, it, we are looking at not just about information from the student on the learning, but also on our teaching methodologies. Yep. So it's not yeah. just providing information about a student, but also about mm -hmm. the teacher as well. I will add into that. Okay. So going back to assessment, I have a feeling that we are probably all now a lot clearer about assessment. Assessment yes. is the process of finding out if actually the student has learnt a damn thing about what you've just been teaching them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's when you find out that they haven't, and you're like, oh, and you, you know, you know that emoji where the the emoji bangs its head on the brick wall, 
and you're like, I must say, I do sometimes feel like that at the end of a lesson. And I'm like, what, what did I just spend an hour doing? You know, okay, there's something wrong here. Uh, you know, and actually, although it might be 50% the student, it's 50% me as well. Um, so um, you've got your learning criteria, your assessment are absolutely umbilically linked to your uh, learning outcomes, learning your learning outcomes. criteria. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Assessment and learning uh, and learning outcomes are linked. Yeah. You, you yes. of course can have learning outcomes and not bother with assessment, but then you'll never know if actually the student understood anything, anything they got. So did um, you want them to understand that grass is green? your assessment. Do they understand grass is green? In this case, it's a yes or no. <laughs> um, but it might be an ameliorated answer. They understand it to some extent, but not as much as you'd like, not as much as you'd hoped. Yeah. Yes. Um, so assessment is the process of you as the teacher understanding how much your student learnt in that lesson. Yeah. And did they actually learn, understand, grasp the learning objective that you wanted them to get. Yeah? yeah? So the learning objective, the learning objective of the lesson was um, to be able to create a spreadsheet. Assessment, can they create a spreadsheet? Yeah? It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. I would always recommend that you keep your assessment criteria as simple as possible, actually for your benefit as well, because it is possible to set your assessment criteria. And then when you come to actually looking at the assessment task, you're like, oh, well, they've actually done the task, but I'm still not sure if they understand the learning objective. Yeah. yeah. So, Make those two married, literally. Objective assessment, objective assessment criteria, objective assessment criteria, objective assessment criteria. In fact, I would actually go back to your to your learning um, plan, uh, yeah. and I would put in by assessment. I would put in all those boxes criteria, the word as well. Yeah. Yeah. Assessment okay. criteria. criteria. What is the criteria? for this learning objective it is bang it is bang it is bang. Bang, bang very clear very plain if you cannot come up with a clear assessment criteria you need to look again at your learning objective maybe yes. that's not focused enough yeah yeah make sense makes sense okay right so we've done our assessment we know that you know these numbers of learning objectives these things the student got they understood these things they didn't. So now we need to put an evaluation on um, that learning. So we've got our learning objectives, we've got our assessment criteria, we know the outcome of the assessment criteria. Now we go back to the overall course objectives. Okay, we're looking at our assessment criteria and how the student did in the assessment and we're saying overall has this student actually gained any value from the course let me go back to what the course was about what was i hoping at the very beginning that the student would get from this course have in in these three months have i actually given value has the student got value what degree of knowledge have they come away with overall and what value is that knowledge to them was it actually worthwhile or could i in fact have simply spent three hours teaching them this one thing or these three topics and that would have given them the same amount of value as actually i've spent three months giving them of course, there is an element of your student in here as well. Your assessment of your student, not theirs, yours, yeah? yeah. Um, was I wasting my student's time? Did actually, they, did they already know half of this anyway? So for them, there was very little value. I now perceive 
that for them there was not as much value in this course as probably they hoped and as I would have liked. Mm. Could I in fact have spent half the course doing X, Y and Z and then moved on to more advanced stuff? Yeah? Um, what skills have I given them? What skills have they got from this? And what use are those skills? Did they really need to understand in huge detail how to program? No, probably not. They're not going to be programmers. So actually, I could just have done 20 minutes on understanding the concept of programming and moved on. Just so that as somebody who works with technology and uses technology, they just have an idea of what it means to program. Yeah, no more than that. Just, you know, an idea. Just like, you know, when you're going to learn classical Indian dance, it's probably a good idea to just start with a brief overview of dance uh, styles in the world. There is a classical ballet, there is a classical jazz, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And then within that context that there are all these different styles, but sometimes they do meet. There are, you know, some movements in classical ballet, which probably mirrors some classical Indian dance styles and so on. Now we're going to look just at what we're looking at, classical Indian dance. Um, because actually, you don't really want to know anything about Mayas Cunningham's modern dance styles. You're going to be a classical Indian dancer, whatever, you know. Um, and it's the same thing. At, in standing back and looking overall at what I taught and at the assessment, have I given value? Has the student got knowledge and skill now that is of worth to him or her and that he or she will be able to use? for the next step, either in their learning or in their career or in their own teaching, if they're going to go on and teach this to somebody else. Does that make sense? Yes, yes yeah? that does make sense. Uh -huh. uh, let me just tell you what I understood. Please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So evaluation is when I have, uh, when a lesson has happened, when I've, uh, we have, the lesson is completed and I evaluate was the time worth for him? What has he learned? What, what I was thinking would he learn and what has he learned and will it help him further? But you can't do that until you've completed the assessment. Yes. Yeah. It, it yeah. is a cycle, you know, plan, review, do plan, review, do it's a mm -hmm. constant cycle. Yeah. Ulrich, may, may yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, of course. All right. So um, could you say that the asses assessments would be a regular thing, much more than the evaluation? Because the, because the evaluations would come later on, because you're judging uh, the student on a particular topic that you've yes. covered. Yes. And those topics would have subtopics for which you would have the assessment. And for that topic, you would, you would have an overall evaluation. Yeah, I, I, I work like that, Sushil, and I would agree with you, which is why I said at the beginning of talking about evaluation, we're now looking at the course in its holistic content. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can, of course, do um, an evaluation of each lesson if you wish to. It will be quite subjective if you do it like that, but it will still have some value. But you cannot evaluate until you've done assessment because you actually you've got nothing to evaluate. Absolutely. Until you so. have assessed what the student has actually learned, mm -hmm. you've got nothing to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you can, so yes, if you wish to. Sorry, Vineet, yeah. Yeah, so assessment come before. Uh, yeah, so there are like the multiple tools to do assessment. You can play a quiz around your topic. You can do a worksheet. You can ask him to present something. You can give a case study. You can give a situation. Like, so there are, uh, are the like the multiple tools to assess. Uh, you could have uh, a discussion or, with him. You could have yeah. a discussion, whatever. Yeah. So, so before starting your topic, you can uh, you can revise the previous topic. You can play some game around it, like. And the evaluation is the like the end result when you are judging uh, uh, the child. Like uh, the evaluation is the end where 
where the child is uh, uh, reached that's the uh, point like evaluation so evaluation is comes very later like assessment uh, assessment uh, uh, is like a uh, like you can do weekly assessment you can do a every uh, like uh, do the assessment uh, after every topic like you can create a one worksheet of each topic so that's also like assess that yeah. will help you to create the assessment yeah. like absolutely yes absolutely there are multiple ways and you can probably event invent new ways you know to assess your particular topics absolutely yes um, i like the idea of you know a uh, them having to do a realistic situation. I mean, for example, uh, you know, they have to go and teach uh, yeah. how so suppose, to do a document. Suppose, yeah. uh, if, if you uh, suppose if you want to like uh, uh, want to know like uh, uh, how many new words he learned. So you can ask him like make a list of words like what you learned in this chapter, uh, which is like new to you. So you also got to know the, these uh, many words he learned through this topic like Yes, so absolutely, is, uh, absolutely. That's right. And the process of assessment also tells you quite a lot about the student and their interest in the subject and the, their interest in their learning as well. You know, yeah. to whether they just dash it off really quickly because you can usually tell. You know, or, may, or maybe it's a too much for uh, 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 writing. You can give a, a, a one spelling with, with a fill in the blanks. Like yeah. so, he so if you want to make sure he learned th those spellings as well, along with uh, uh, pronunciation. So you should give a ten spellings with a fill in the blanks, and he will fill the alphabets in that and complete that spelling. That's also an assessment. Aspect. You could give a spelling test orally when you're in a session with him. You could yes. say, you know, we're going to start the session with a quick five minute spelling test because it's really important that you actually can spell these words correctly. Like or maybe a, maybe a, yes. you prepared a, like a multiple, uh, a, a multiple uh, question, like there are like the four options of that spelling and he needs to be take the right one. Whatever you wish, you can do that as well. You know, I mean, there are teaching and learning platforms where you can share and be working on the same document at the same time. And the way I do it, we tend to work with Anil, I tend to work either in WhatsApp or in Skype. And I will ask him to write something down and hold it up to the camera. Or if I'm giving him a spelling, I will write it down and hold it up to the camera for him. So, you know, there's all sorts of interactive ways that you can use and all sorts of things you can create, Vanita, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Nicola, uh, may I say something? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, um... Uh, right now, uh, I need to go see about my parents, and um, I think you and I should uh, get together, and I'll share my document with you. Okay. The reason why why I was here was because I needed a better understanding of assessment and evaluation. But it turns out it's the same thing that I was I you already had anyway. in my mind. Okay. Yeah. They're just so, going to do feedback. Uh, if you can hang on for five minutes. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so feedback. Feedback is actually completely different from assessment or from evaluation. Yeah, you are not looking as a as a teacher um, either to know whether your student has understood something or to for your own self to assess what value they have got out of a particular course or topic. Yeah, or subject that you've been teaching them. In feedback. What you are looking for from as the teacher is you are looking for information from the student as to how they how they took your teaching. Right. Yeah. So um, the student might say, do you know what? Uh, the course has been brilliant. I've absolutely loved it. And I really think that I have understood everything that you wanted to teach. Or that you wanted to teach me in this course. However, I found it really off-putting that um, you wore a red shirt. <laughs> I'm just picking on you, Sushil. <laughs> so, That's okay. You know? Go ahead. Take away. Yeah. Um, I found it really off-putting that you were drinking all the way through my lesson. Um, I didn't like. I found it difficult to understand your English. You know. I don't think that this is the student speaking. I don't think that you have enough English knowledge yourself 
to be able to teach in English. I found it really difficult when you were trying to explain something in English, I couldn't understand it. And of course, then you had to go into Hindi, which was fine, I understood it all, but then I didn't get the English, yeah? For example, I'm just throwing out things that it could be. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we have very irritating, I mean, like me, I use my hands a lot. That may be very irritating for some students or virtually, maybe if I'm in, in the classroom, it's not. But virtually, it could be really irritating because you're only seeing bits of my hands going up and down. You're not actually seeing my full body language. Yeah. For example, that could be irritating. Um, a student might say, I find it confusing that you're using two languages. Would you either just use English or just use Hindi? Some students do have trouble moving between the two and prefer just for something to be in one language or the other. If they actually say to you, I just want this taught in Hindi and it's a one-to-one -one lesson, well, okay, you know. If there's no reason not to teach it in Hindi, then teach it in Hindi, yeah. whatever. Um, so these are the sorts of feedback that you get from a teacher. I find that you don't explain things very well. I find you talk too quickly and I can't keep up with you. Um, I find you use lots of words and I don't understand what they mean. And if I kept asking you, it would interrupt the learning, you know, for example. I mean, there are a million and one things that the student could say. The student could also say, I actually found the time of the lesson didn't suit me. So an hour is too long for me. I can't virtually, I cannot concentrate for an hour. If you think of a classroom, there are lots of distractions going on. Very often in the classroom, somebody might just say, could we just take a comfort break, you know, five minutes. Virtually that doesn't happen. It's very focused on Zoom or on Skype or whatever. Maybe an hour is too long for some students. They cannot hold it together for that long. Or maybe in that time, they need a five minute break to go and get a drink or go to the loo or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and they didn't get it because you didn't think of asking them if they needed it. Yeah, for example, um, yeah, maybe yeah. the time of day for them wasn't right. It didn't work. It might suit you, but actually it doesn't suit the student. Did you ever think to ask them? You know, I mean, now for me, it's a bit different because when I'm teaching in different countries, we have a time issue problem. So we always have to compromise times that I actually don't want to be at three o'clock in the morning in my pajamas, you know, teaching a lesson. Um, so you know, there's always a compromise. But if, it's, if you're within the same time zone, or just like if I'm teaching in Europe, I'm only an hour behind, well, then, okay, we can work out a time that's comfortable for all of us, yeah? yeah? So there are all these things that might have nothing to do with your actual teaching, but have affected your student's ability to learn from your teaching. Yeah. Yeah. A million and one things. Um, so, yeah. For example, the other the other week, Anil texted me about half an hour before the lesson and said, um, I've got a headache and I don't think I'll be able to concentrate. So I can't have a lesson today. And I texted him back and said, Anil, take a pill, you know, go and take a paracetamol. And he texted back and said, oh, I've had the headache all day. I said, well, I'm sorry then even more I'm saying to you, why didn't you take a pill in the morning when you woke up and found you had a headache? Um, but okay, you know, if you haven't got a paracetamol and you don't think you can concentrate, then we won't have a lesson. I didn't hear from him. And then two minutes before the lesson, he said, oh, I'm here now. I took a pill and my headache's gone. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. I said, now you're gonna have to wait because actually I had assumed you weren't having the lesson and now I'm gonna need another, you know, five or six minutes to actually get in front of my computer and be ready. <laughs> but really. I think, I think uh, Sushil Bhai and me, we have like multiple examples of we, this. Yeah, yeah, we have suffered a lot, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid I, I give them very short shift, you know. Yes. If they and, say to me, I'm not going to the lesson because, you know, the dog's eaten my homework or, you know, the cow peed on it or something. Actually, Nicola, this is quite um, a surprise to both Vineet and I because when they were at Prakriti, I'm talking about all of the children. I'm talking about Asha, uh, Arun, uh, Jeet, uh, Anil, all of them. When, when they were at Prakriti, they were 
quite disciplined and punctual and all of all of these things. Ah, so, but because they had the context of the school, yeah. they knew. So even in the beginning, when we started and the online sessions, even, uh, even, even in the beginning, Anil was quite enthusiastic. And uh, it turned out, uh, I think it was May, Vineet, was it in May, that he just lost interest all of a sudden. And, so Ara, uh, you know, Anil, just went. <laughs> Anil, Anil. Anil, right. I don't know because yeah. I only started with Anil in May. Yeah. And he came yeah. to me very... Abhishek, be ready. Be ready with these kind of excuses. <laughs> but Aaron, Aaron did that. He, I was working with him for two years. And, then, and during that time, sometimes he went, we use a, a French word, we say off-piste. Um, uh, say that again, please. Say that again. Okay. Off, as in off, O-double-F, piste, which is a French word, P-I-E-S-T-E. And mm -hmm. I think it's got some accents in the French. The piste is the ski slope that you come down, the proper ski slope, the one you're supposed to come down. Okay. Some very advanced skiers like to ski not on the piste, which isn't really challenging for them. They like to ski off piste and go down their own way and hopefully don't break their neck, yeah? So it's an expression that we've taken into English. And when, when somebody is going a bit AWOL, they're going a bit, you know, not how we want them to be. We say they've gone off piece. Off piece. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, it's a nice expression. So, yes, several times during the yeah. two years, Aaron went a bit off piece, but I was able to, or Ulrika and I, whatever, we were able to bring him back. But then suddenly, he just suddenly lost interest completely. So, uh, uh, I and just, I, I actually yeah. said to Ulrika, I'm not going to teach him anymore, you know, because actually uh, all of this that I do with Janwa is voluntary because I'm on the board of the um, charity, the original charity that supports uh, yeah. Janwa. I'm a board member. Uh, so the Nicola, teacher, I do. Nicola, I, I, um, you've got to go, yeah. So, no, no, no. Uh, no, no. I was just saying that um, if you could uh, stay and give me like seven to eight minutes, I'll be back after I see my parents. And then I could ask you, uh, since I have you here, I could ask you about the other things that I have here. Yes, uh, you can. You. It just depends how long you're going to be. Uh, not more than seven or eight minutes. I just oh, need to give them the yes, notification. Oh, and... Yes, of course. That's oh, no. fine. Oh, no. Okay, I'll be right back. Then. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, Nicola, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, you finish your thing, yeah. No, you, no, I think I was just talking about feedback. That is from the student's perspective. Mm -hmm. They yeah. need to have an opportunity to actually give feedback on the whole experience. Yeah. So I just want to add a couple of things in this feedback thing. The feedback should be constructive, as it I think be. about. It so, should uh, be. When, yeah, I mean, when, it's not an opportunity for them to tell you that, you know, to yeah, yeah. No, that's not. So whenever, whenever we are asking for a feedback from the adult, from the children, from the, any one of them, like we should use one technique, which is what is good about, what is good in that session, and what could we make better? Like, so this is the constructive way to ask, like, that's tell me the two good things fun. about this and uh, tell me the two things which could be a better, like, yeah. so the, the, I tend to vary it according to the age of the children. If it's with young children, I'll say something like, what was your best bit? What did you enjoy yeah. most? Yeah. What did you have fun? Which was your fun bit? You know, True. what were the bits that you remember and why did you remember them? Because they were fun or, in, you know, whatever. Obviously, with older students, you can say, um, you know, this is your opportunity to give me feedback because as well as you learning and progressing, I also need to learn and improve as a teacher. Okay, yeah. And I do that by the feedback that I get from my students. So, you know, it, this isn't a time for you. Well, I mean, actually, to be honest, if a student really felt that the entire course that you've just taught them over three months or whatever was a waste of time, they must say that, but they don't have to be rude about it. You know? yeah. I mean, what we always say to children is there is never a need to be rude. Yep, things can be worked out. You can say things, you can explain things to people. You don't have to be unkind or hurtful or rude in the way you do it. If you actually think that you've just spent three months with me and the whole thing was a waste of time, okay, say, do you know what, Nicola? I just have lost three months of my life that I'm never going to get back. And I feel really sad about that. And I will say, well, you couldn't feel sadder than me. Okay, 
is there a why in this? Why is it that you feel that actually everything we've done has been of no use to you whatsoever? Then you will probably find that somewhere in that very beginning when you were setting the scene, you went wrong or they didn't come on board with you at that point and you didn't notice or whatever, you know. You were saying, I'm going to teach you about ice cream and they were saying, all they're interested in learning about is pancakes, you know. Um, and you didn't pick it up at the beginning. Now, that may not be your fault. Sometimes it really isn't our fault. And particularly if we've got a class, you know, with 20 or 30 kids in, well, actually, the chances are that one or two of those kids are probably not going to be interested in most of what we've got to say. That's life, you know. But they're in a class, and sorry, you didn't put them in that class, and they probably don't have the option not to be in the class. Yeah. But if they do have the option not to be in the class, then they should have taken that, maybe not after the first lesson, but certainly after the second or third, when they realise, like at university, you know, if you're sitting in a lecture, and by the third lecture, you're like, I don't know why I'm sitting here. I'm not interested in this. I'm not learning anything from it. I don't want to be here. Then actually, you go to the, um, the course management leader and you say, I don't want to be in these lectures. Can I change to something else? Yeah. And most kids in school don't have the opportunity to do that, especially primary school, because they need to know what they don't need to know before they can say they don't need to know it. So actually, they've got to have a basic education, full stop. But after that, when they get into being, you know, sort of 14, 15, actually, they've got their own minds, they've got their own objectives, they're beginning to develop their own destinations. And so, you know, they can quite reasonably say, I don't need to be learning higher maths. This isn't something I'm ever going to use in my life. And you know what? If in 20 years time I find I need it, I can go and do a course on it. Fine. You know, yeah. then the minute you start forcing somebody into something just because they're there in the school and it says so on the curriculum, you've lost them if they don't want to do it. Yeah. yeah. In so, India, even in higher education, it's the same. Yeah. If you, are, if you have taken a subject, you have to go through it for all three years, two years, one year. That's a great change. In, in most Western universities, you are allowed to change. Change, yes. Even if you do a year, sometimes you do two years, and then you suddenly think, you know what, I don't want to be doing this. You know, I, I, I know I registered for um, psychology, but actually what I really want to be doing is psychotherapy or something. They'll let you change. They will let you change. Because actually, what's the point? You come out with a degree that's probably not a good degree, and it's not something that you want. So you've got to go and do another degree or a postgraduate certificate in what you want. You've just wasted time and money. So no, you are, you are allowed to change, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know that you don't want to do something until you're doing it. <laughs> yes, yes. Just think, oh, well, it sounds interesting. You know, maybe I really am interested in psychology. And then, you know, by the time you get to six months in on Freud, you've had enough. <laughs> you actually, yeah, yeah. If you read another book about Freud, you're going to scream. So you just want to change. It's reasonable. It happens, yeah. happens a lot with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. guys, I, I think I should leave because it's 11 o'clock and I have a session in the morning at 8. So. Uh, may I just say one thing about Anil? Just one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I find his general knowledge is abysmal. It's really, really bad. For example, um, I mean, I know everything is in context, but these are young leaders of the future. And as yeah. such, my feeling is they should also have a general knowledge of the world and what's gone in it, and not just of Janwa and Madhya Pradesh and what's happening in Pana. They don't even necessarily know what's going on politically in, in India. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's everyone that's, in general. I think it's yeah. a real problem. And, and I think it was just last week. Um, inevitably, in my lessons, we usually have, we usually do something that gets us into a general discussion that's wider than just the lesson. And somehow, oh, I know what it was. It was to do with twins for some reason. Don't ask me why. And I was talking about the fact that twins appear in lots of myths. We were talking about myths and legends because he didn't know what a myth was and what a legend was. And then we went on and, and in myths and legends, we'd been reading an extract from a myth and a legend about wolves. And it talked about Matt Mowgli. That's what it was about. And, um, you know, the legends of there are many legends around the world where children are brought up by animals of all different types. 
And I was saying, for example, the founding of Rome is built on the myth of Romulus and Remus. Well, I didn't expect him to know necessarily Romulus and Remus, but I did expect him to know where Rome was. He had no idea. He'd never heard of Rome. No, never. Yeah. So I said to him, well, have you, can you name me any other countries? Um, and he did name a few, but some he named cities, not countries. Country. Yeah. And then I said to him, have you heard of a country called Italy? And he said, oh, I think I might possibly have done. Maybe just because of that, like his Asha and Arun being to uh, uh, certain countries. So maybe he heard from there and uh, from the Urlik maybe. Like. <laughs> so I said to him, what did you learn in geography at school? And he said, oh, um, I learned about the Himalayas. Okay, great, good. I learned about the Himalayas as well. But I also learned that Rome is the capital of Italy. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm just saying, if in your lessons with him, you have an opportunity for a discussion that will just be a little bit wider, you know. Yeah, yes, I yeah. That's the thing. I've also told him that he should read a paper. They do get the paper. Newspaper. They have to go to Pana and they get the papers from Pana. I don't think every day, but certainly a couple of times a week. And I said to him, you must read a newspaper. You must know what's going on in your own country. Now, now, we, uh, now he's not in the Janwa village, uh, and, uh, not even in the Pana. I shifted him to a uh, Urlik's tree house. So oh. now he, uh, okay. Yeah, so now he's in Mandla. So maybe he can get the newspaper on the daily basis. Okay, so I, okay. I, I, I will. I will arrange a newspaper for him. Is the tree house in that um, uh, sort of hotel complex thing? Uh, yeah, uh, there is like the Urlik's farmhouse uh, yeah. where it's located. Yeah. Okay, right. It's Madla, isn't it? Yeah, yes. in Madla. Overlooking the river. Yeah, the Ken River. Yeah, yeah. 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 Near, the, uh, near the wildlife park. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In okay. front of the wildlife been, park. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, uh, when I was there, I don't think Ulrika had the tree house um, yeah, she was in hotel, yeah. yeah but uh, yeah she was in she had a um, uh, you know cottage like, a cottage thingy in the hotel area but yeah but we went to the park and and we went to ken river and well we could you could see ken river anyway um so yeah so he's there on his own yeah what is he doing think... there? just studying or, or why is he there uh, because uh, uh, he's not able to study the, uh, at home, like a uh, lot of disturbance. So we plan to shift him uh, Monday to Friday in the tree house. And right. Saturday, Sunday, over the weekend, he will come back to his home. So this is because they can't go back to Prakriti yet? Uh, yes. Not, uh, yeah. not really. Uh, if I may. If I may. You're back. Okay, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, because so, Prakriti is uh, uh, not running uh, physically, uh, it's running virtually. virtually. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there is nobody at the Prakriti and we don't want him to bring here as of now. The situation is not very good here. No, I heard. Yeah. Every, every weekend uh, there is a lockdown here. Oh, nobody every weekend? That's yeah, every not. weekend. They yeah. say, th oh, every week, I was going to say. They, they think the uh, virus only comes at the weekend. Hello, it's weekend. Yeah. And the virus. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the government think that like people like start coming out uh, on the weekends for enjoying their weekends. So they stop uh, like uh, they... Put so that blog. will be interesting to see how he does that. Is he on his own like this for the first time? Really on his own? Uh, no, I think... actually no, because he's been here. Uh, uh, he lives, uh, he used to live right next to Prakriti um, and he stayed there alone for about a month. Oh, Beneath, okay. Was it a month? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, maybe a two month, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's months, fine then. So he's that. used to that. And, and does yeah. he have to feed himself or does he have to go shopping or how is his food? Oh, he's, he's, yeah. a, he's, he's a good so cook. He, yeah, okay, so we, right. <laughs> we, used to provide, we use, school is used to provide him a, a morning breakfast and lunch. Uh, right. Dinner, he uh, he prepared himself. Okay, perfect. Okay, so he's all set up there. Good. So we should see some amazing work coming out of him. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. Um, Vinny, did you have anything else you wanted to ask? And is that clear and has it been helpful? Uh, I just want to uh, ask one thing only, which is like confusing me as of now. Uh, I am, I suppose if my learning outcome is to make him understand certain topic, so how I design my assessment? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the only question I needed. Suppose I'm teaching him him a simple machinery. Yes, yeah, so how to operate it. Yeah, yeah. So the, what is like the assessment criteria? I just want to be understand the assessment criteria only. What should my assistant criteria and what is like the parameters? Well, assessment like? criteria should be things which when he does them, show you that he has learnt what you wanted him to learn. Okay. So if you okay. want him to know how to operate a piece of machinery, you mm -hmm. teach him how to operate that machinery. And then your assessment is either for him to describe in great detail how he operates that machinery or to show you practically, you know, by having that piece of machinery there and you watching while he does a task that you've set for him with the machinery. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So the assessment criteria proves the learning objective. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. If you okay. want to put your assessment criteria into your document, I will then have a, and send it over to me again, or yeah, I will I'll then have a look at the criteria for you. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this uh, session. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so I will stay. We can stay. Uh, yeah, Nicola and you will stay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I just need to take a leave because I have a morning yeah. session at 8. I mean, so I'm hosting the meeting, so I, I can end <laughs> it for everybody. If, if Vinit goes, it won't, we won't lose you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good. Thank so you I so hope much. it was useful for you, Vinit, and thank you for your time. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Nicola. Thank, 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 thank you, Thank you, Abhishek. Abhishek, is it helpful for you and do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't have any questions uh, and it was very helpful for me actually. Okay. Uh, also the assessment evaluation and feedback and also how to make the student interested okay. in the, to get the, in the, the hook. The one last bit of feedback that I didn't give was, is the other way around. That's the feedback from the student. You can also give the student feedback. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can say the same sorts of things. You know, I found it very difficult um, when every week you were late by 10 minutes because actually I have a program of other students I have to teach. And if you are late 10 minutes, it means I'm late for my next me uh, lesson and so on. I yeah. found it very irritating that most weeks when you came to the lesson, you hadn't done the homework. So actually it's difficult for me then to build your next lesson because I don't really know if you've understood last week's lesson and so on, you know. Yeah. Um, I would really rather you didn't chew all the time while I'm teaching you or please yeah. don't smoke weed just before the lesson because your brain is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's okay. going to the tree house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope he's not for the stash of joints with him. That's all. <laughs> I mean, okay, one or two when you're meditating, maybe. But when I you're think, I think you, need, you should go with him to supervise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bea, sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, all the Thank best you. to you. Hope to see you yeah. again, maybe one day. Okay. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Right, Good Sushil, night. I know it's very late. How can I help you? Um, well, um, so I saw what I can you had get done. Rid of this. I don't need to share this with you anymore, do I? Or do you want this still? Um, actually, um, I saw that earlier. And my question was in English. How would, yeah. see, Ulrich wants it in a certain way. She wants it, um, see, because you did it for Abhishek this way. You did it monthly, uh, a monthly division, a chapter-wise distribution, well, number of sessions. Sushil, that was how he had done it. I worked with what he gave me. Oh, that, he told me that you had done uh, completely everything. So I guess that there's a misunderstanding. No, 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 no. Between he wrote the plan uh -huh. and sent it over to me. The okay. only thing I changed was the assessment column. Because mm -hmm. firstly, he'd called it evaluation. And secondly, the way he'd written the assessment criteria was not assessment criteria. So I rephrased it and, re and called the column assessment. But the actual oh. layout of the plan 
was entirely his. I did nothing to that. That was entirely his. All right. Yeah, because it didn't, uh, uh, see, my thing was, uh, okay, forget that plan. Um, if we were to do it uh, in English, and if we were to do it, because Ulrich wants it, uh, the number of sessions and, and uh, section-wise, if you were to do something like that, how would you go about doing that? Because I've done the uh, learning objectives and everything. Yeah. Um, many times, so I know uh, what to put in there, but the, I think you have something for me. Yeah, I just had a thought that I could show you something. I mean, in, in England, we uh, have templates for planning. Sure. Um, there are general ones, but very often a school will actually customize its own template and mm -hmm. all the teachers have to use it, never mind their subject or whatever, so that mm -hmm. the head can very quickly review. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so right. um, this one, which probably doesn't apply, this is just a straightforward. Can you see that? Time. Uh, I can. Um, it's not very clear what's written on the top. So it's on the just, top is written timetable. Timetable. Okay. Down okay. the side yeah. are the days of the week, and then up All right. here are the um, slots. So if it's right. a school, you'll know that on Mondays. For example, on, this would be, say, Class A, right? Class A, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me, just one minute. Do you want to go out? Okay, I'm just going to let my dogs out. I'll be two seconds. <laughs> Come on, boys. Out to go then. <laughs> they wanted to try and catch a pigeon that had landed in the yard. Oh, I, hope, I hope the pigeon flew away. It did. Sometimes they don't always. I have two oh. lurchers and they're very quick. But oh. uh, this time it flew away. It heard the door opening, I think. Yeah, so if this is class B, then uh -huh. um, here's the timetable for English. Here are the days of the week. Um, and then on Monday, they've got literature at 11 o'clock. On Tuesday, they've got language at nine o'clock on wednesday they've got poetry and so on yeah it's just a timetable so that doesn't apply particularly but then we have uh that's the one i want uh here we go um this could apply actually but you'd need different headings so this is an overview sheet okay and for you, what you could do is you could, you could have, it's like, a, do you know what a mind map is? Absolutely, I'm studying them right now, yes. Okay. So you could do your, your plan of your course for you, maybe also to share with the student, you could do it as a mind map. So in the middle is your course title. Mm -hmm. And then each of your main spokes of your central wheel is one of your topics mm -hmm. and then your sub spokes coming off your main spoke are the differentiated aspects of each topic mm -hmm. yeah and right. you can create that and share mm -hmm. it with anil at that point and say to him this is the course i'm planning for you this is the course topic this is the overall, it's a course on computers, understanding computers. Here are the spokes. So software, hardware, um, documentation, spreadsheet, et cetera, round the wheel. And these are the differentiated topics. So, you know, cells, formats, you know, whatever. That's, uh, a, that's a very good idea, actually. Uh, if you make a mind map, it, uh, mind maps have, they have, uh, they're amazing actually so they're very they clear. Clear. that's basically what this is it's just laid out in a different way but that's a right, right. so um, share it with anil at that stage and ask him mm -hmm. is there anything here on this mind map that you already absolutely know is there mm -hmm. anything that is not on this mind map that, that i have this not that mm -hmm. you want to know mm -hmm. and that establishes right at the beginning that you are both another English expression, singing off the same hymn sheet. Do you know that one? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So that, and that's what you need to establish. 
you both want to be on the same page at the beginning. Yeah. Right. If he looks at it and says, I'm not interested in any of this. I don't want to know any of this. I know it all. Then you have a discussion with him. Yeah. Mm. Then you actually sit down, <laughs> proverbially, virtually, you know, with a cup of tea each, and you actually have a discussion. Okay, Neil, why do you think you don't need to know anything about computers? Because actually, your entire world is going to be computer driven. Sorry, but that's the truth of it. So let's have this discussion. And you will find out, you know, what he's interested in, why, where, where, and then you can go back and redesign your mind map around the knowledge that he actually wants to have, plus adding in a few things that you know he needs. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a good place to start. Then, um, where have I got my? Uh, here we go. Um, right. Then we then do this. Now this is a long term plan. Long -term yeah. So yeah. this is the formal long term planning sheet for your whole course. So that mm -hmm. will give you your course topic, your overall course name, sorry, your course name, then your topics. So each topic, each month, you've got three or four topics, but each mm -hmm. month has an overall topic, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So down the side here, you will have month topic. Oh, um, I think I should uh, tell you a little bit about uh, uh, what uh, I'm supposed to do with him, uh, what I do with him, actually. Yeah. Because Ulrich has, um, after the classes um, in Prakriti, we used to give emphasis on the all four components of the language, reading, writing, listening, everything. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We used to work on the language holistically. Mm -hmm. um, but here, Ulrich wants me to uh, place emphasis more on the speaking part of it. Right. Uh, but, but of course, uh, that doesn't work without the other three. So right. um, we do uh, the other three as well, but we more fo we focus more a little more on the speaking. So right. I have him in the evenings whenever he's uh, in the mood. Uh, uh, he calls me up in the evenings and we have a conversation because in Janbar, um, with the exception of Asha, Arun, and Ajit. Um, Nobody speaks English. Does not have, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have anybody to speak exactly. with. Right? So, yeah. That's a so, problem. Um, yeah, that's a problem. So that's why um, it's kind of like I want him to call every day, but uh, mm -hmm. sometimes he genuinely gets busy and sometimes he's just not into it. Have you suggested to him that he joins online student language discussion groups? Because they, um, they are all, they're going all the time. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I haven't suggested it, but that's a good idea, though. Yeah. I mean, for example, Babbel, which is an online language learning course, which that's you B A B B L E. Uh, yes, I think it is. I think that's how they spell it. Sometimes they spell things differently, you know, just for to be clever. Um, yeah, or they can't find a domain name or something like that. He can find. Or he can just search for online language courses, but all right. um, almost all of them have a free. Uh, section you know you can join for free and you get a certain amount of language lessons online for free just takes you through an online course and it's free but along so, with along with I mean that wouldn't hurt him to do anyway along with that goes the community and that's what he needs yeah yes absolutely the language absolutely. Learning community yeah. he'll mm -hmm. also find language communities on Twitter on Facebook um, yeah. Probably, what's the one that the youngsters go on? Um, there's another one, isn't there? There's another social app that is more for younger people. Uh, no, I, can't, I can't think of it, but anyway, there is. Um, right. And if he looks for, um, you know, language communities, language learners, English, and he'll he'll meet in that community. He'll meet students from all over the world who are la learning English. Mm -hmm. And they just get together to chat, just literally, you know, where are you? What's your life like? You know, and, and sometimes people meet and even marry like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it's, yeah. it would be very good because also he'll hear other English accents. He'll hear English Absolutely. spoken in a different way. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, so what I do is um, I also have him record um, something like if we've discussed something, like we've worked on a write up or a story or whatever. Yeah. That day, I have him summarize it and send me a voice message on WhatsApp. 
Right. So that I have a understanding of his comprehension of the entire thing. Yeah, and that's very good. Also, yeah. yeah, and also what I do is um, I do storytelling for children. Uh, to give you a little background. Um, in English Anil or Hindi? No, no, in English, completely in English. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, to give you a little background, Anil was actually in grade five when he was at Prakriti. And grade five was my grade. I used to teach those children. Okay. So, so he's, um, he's actually, I used to teach him uh, in the mornings with the other Janwar children, Asha, Arun, Ajit, and Brijender mm -hmm. in the morning early mornings and then uh, whenever whenever it was english class in grade 5 he used to come into class right but every now and again because there was sometimes trouble in janwar or he had to travel he missed a lot on it yeah. so what i'm doing is i'm uh, so uh, my association with him has it, it, it goes a long way back yeah yeah so uh, the thing is that he um, he has improved a lot um, he has improved a lot uh, but the thing is, this distance, if he was closer, because he was coming to my place um, uh, earlier, because I have quit Prakriti. Uh, my, my dad was not well, so I've quit oh. Prakriti in March. I'm so sorry. Is he better? Oh, yeah, he's much better. He's much Are better. you back at Prakriti now? No no no. no, no, no. No, no, no. I've quit Prakriti because I need to stay with my, my mom and dad. Ah, okay. So that's, that's the main reason, right? So, but um, Ulrik and I, we came to an understanding and I didn't want to leave Anil. Right, Anil was uh, he, so he used to come to my place, and we, we used to have a set. We used to have sessions together. Mm. Our sessions are three times a week. Okay. Uh, and Ulrik wants me to focus more on the speaking part, right? Uh, because he needs to uh, speak more. She maybe she's training him for a certain reason. I I, I don't know that, mm. uh, but uh, yeah, that's what she wants. And so he used to come home, and at home it was just like a classroom kind of an environment so i was much more i'm much more attuned to that uh, this online thing is new to me too <laughs> yeah right so yeah so um initially it was going well and also when i'm doing the storytelling um he's always invited uh, so he's always there in my storytelling session and one reason why i know that he genuinely missed last week entire week uh one genuine reason I know is because he missed those storytelling sessions as well. And he's pretty enthusiastic about those. <laughs> so I know that the monsoon season is, uh, is actually wreaking havoc on the power supply uh, of, yes, you know, I'm that. Sure. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's why his reasons were genuine last week to miss classes, both with Vineet and myself. Well, he didn't miss with me. He just said he had a headache and then suddenly his headache went when he took a pill. <laughs> But I believe it was uh, just, uh, you take it on Sundays, right? Yeah, Sunday morning. Well, morning my time. It's about, it's right. uh, 9, 30, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30, 1, 30. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, your time. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think we're four and a half hours uh, uh, apart, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Well, we're, when we're on summertime, when here we're on summertime, we're four and a half hours apart. When we're on wintertime, it's five hours. Oh, so uh, England has daylight saving then? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing that uh, I do with him. And, um, uh, and we've included another component. Um, Ulrik wants me to work on stories with him. Writing. So, them. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, one of the things I used to do with him was I used to ask him what did like in the past week or the weekend and, you know, write it up. Yeah. So that uh, the written part, I could see it. I could, um, you know, like just take a look at it and I could tell him. Right. Uh, or just uh, right now what I do is I leave comments on the side. You know how you leave comments um, on a Google Doc? Mm -hmm. And then he tries to understand why I've left that comment. And it's probably, uh, you know, like, for, for instance, if it's a punctuation error, then I leave a comment. Um, you know, it's not like a direct comment. That, it's a punctuation thing. It's an indirect comment. Mm -hmm. He needs to figure out by himself what went wrong there because that thing has already been uh, reviewed. Yeah, what we have is um, a series of um, shortenings that we put on mm -hmm. students' work. So, for example, if it's a punctuation, we put a P. Um, oh. If it's a capital letter that's wrong, we put a CL. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We do the same thing, but it's yeah. actually. Um, uh, so actually, they have to figure out where it should go. <laughs> right, right. No, no. The thing is that um, see, even Ulrik initially, the very first time Ulrik introduced me to these children, Asha, I have known for three years because Asha was an assistant facilitator here at huh. Prakriti. Hmm. Yeah. So um, Asha, I've known for the longest time, uh, but uh, when these kids all three uh, or four of these gentlemen, when they came to practice, mm. they had a serious problem with, uh, you know, the smallest of things, uh, with punctuation, with capitalization, yeah. everything. I mean, they, they, they just kept on repeating those mistakes. Yes. Yeah. Aaron yeah. did and that I, for two years. Yes, yes. I was about to say that uh, I believe that um, you know that about Arun, they, they did. So he just couldn't or didn't want to take on new learning. He just didn't. I think, I think it, it was the fact that he didn't want to. Otherwise, I those think he didn't want to. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm but, absolutely sure that he believed that his English was good. People understood him when he spoke. And even when he wrote, people could read and understand what he'd written. So oh, why did he need any more? I concur with you completely because um, uh, Arun, um, you know, there have been instances when he's had this, um, he's a teenager. So <laughs> he's had this, uh, this thing about him that he knows. I mean, despite the fact you told him that, no, that's not correct. But, you know, he would nod his head, but he would say the same thing again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. A little bit cocky, if I, if I may say that. Yes, um, absolutely. But, yeah. yeah, but, but um, um, slowly Asher and still. Is, is older. Asher is quite a bit older. Uh, Asha no, Arun and Asha are pretty much the same age. Oh, are they? I thought Arun was younger than Asha. Asha's about 24, isn't she? No, no. Asha is 21. She just turned 21 oh, about a few days. 21. Ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. yes. And uh, yeah, so Asha's been doing really well with the children. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And well, while you were talking to uh, Vineet and, um, about the, the whole uh, the kid situation in Janwar, so they have come up with a, a brilliant solution to this. Oh, what have they come oh, up with? Um, actually, they started doing the classes at night. Right. And that allows the children to come to the, uh, you know, the uh, Villa Janvar at night. But are the they... children capable? I mean, some of them are quite young. They must be exhausted. They've been out in the fields all day. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, just to uh, emphasize on your point, um, Arun, um, you know, Arun is unabashed and everything. He, he puts it on Facebook while a child is sleeping or just about to fall asleep. He puts it on Facebook. <laughs> he does that kind of thing. Yeah, but that's the solution that they came up with. That at night, the children would be free and the parents would not need them. And uh, so that's the solution for right now that they came up with. And I think for right now, it works. <laughs> it works if the children are in any way capable of yeah. learning anything Absolutely. after Absolutely. a very long physical day outside Absolutely. in the Absolutely. heat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course, it's, it's you know, one obvious way. But I, I would have to question the quality, the value of the learning that they will get. True, true. at that time i think actually i mean i actually think that the adults need to engage because if the village is going to move on they need to be able to do this oh, yeah. work without the children Absolutely. it's and not that's the children. hardest challenge yeah. uh, that they have right now yeah. because uh, the parents are um first of all um let's call a spade a spade uh, the parents um they're poor so yeah. they need the help, all the help that they can get. Yeah. And, get and they it, can't afford to buy children. in labor, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so true. And, um, and second, um, even if this was taken care of, uh, it's the, the thing is that the parents themselves are not convinced that this would benefit the children in the way that we know it would benefit them. Yeah. Because so they can't see it benefiting the village and they need the children to just be laborers and then to take over the work. Right, and Thank they're you. unable to see the fact that if they get educated, um, they will have much more opportuni uh, opportunities then. Well, they may so even be able to bring in machinery that will actually require less labor. <laughs> for absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, uh, get jobs. <laughs> yeah. 
get jobs and have enough money to buy labor. Yes, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, but I mean, yes, change yes. is very so, threatening. Change, I'm sorry? Change is very threatening for oh, the absolutely. adults. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. It is to us too. <laughs> it's, for me, it's also um, not that easy. <laughs> I spent my Always. life having to change, so I've got used to it. <laughs> Every time I think I'm settled and doing something, I have to change it all. <laughs> Bang, there's a change. <laughs> it's definitely the story of my life. <laughs> so I've got I used think, to change. <laughs> I, think, I think you've kind of inspired me to say something here. I think change is inevitable. So I think it is. you better get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> change is inevitable, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's like now, n things will not be how they were, yeah? After this um, pandemic, you know, things will have changed. Some things will never go back to how they were. Never. Never. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how, mm -hmm. it's how things move on. That's, that's how things move on. That's called progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... Yes. True. That's where we are. And um, do you want to finish off on this planning? Uh, yes, I'm, please. So, okay? um, what I was suggesting was you've got your mind map and you've done that. Mm -hmm. Then once you and um, Anil or your students, whoever, in this case Anil, mm -hmm. are happy with that, you then transfer it to a long-term plan. The long-term right. plan has got your course title and mm -hmm. then it's got... Um, each topic that you're going to cover and it's got a brief 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 details just bullet points of what is going to be in each topic mm -hmm. and then the dates um the so date the course the title would be english that's it right the course title would be english well uh, if if you're covering everything yes uh, but you might if, you might want it to be english story writing for example, okay. if you're right. going to do a course that is, I mean, if you're going to do just English, then obviously your topics will probably be more. Story writing, have, the reading comprehension, well, all you'll yeah. have Your four topics will be listening, right. speaking, reading, writing. And story uh, writing. Yeah, well, that comes in writing. Listening, yeah. speaking, reading, writing. And then yeah. under writing, you'll have story writing, letter writing, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm poetry, whatever you want to cover with him, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Applications, uh, mm -hmm. writing for funding, funding writing, you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. All the writing that you think he needs to cover. So mm -hmm. this is just, uh, this is the general long-term plan. Mm -hmm. uh, English, um, reading, writing, speaking, listening, under reading, mm -hmm. Newspaper, novels, poetry, history books, whatever you want him to cover. Under mm -hmm. writing, story writing, letter writing, formal mm -hmm. applications, you know, mm -hmm. like passport mm -hmm. applications, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Listening, um, mm -hmm. listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Listening to similar, English. Similar to the, uh, the online... Um, um, the babble you were describing, yeah. something like that. Well, that's that's speaking, really. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. But listening is podcasts um, or audio books. Mm -hmm. There are millions of them out there. Mm -hmm. um, listening to uh, the news in English, BBC World Service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's many, many listening activities that he can mm -hmm. do. Then mm -hmm. speaking. Obviously, speaking, holding conversations with you, speaking with me even, you can put that down because he talks with me once a week. And then, uh, yeah, online communities, English communities, maybe once every month, he could have um, an online conversation with Ulrika, telling him, telling her what he's learned that month, you know, whatever. So, that could act yeah. as uh, an evaluation. Yeah. And then you've got, um, the, the dates when each of these topics are going to be covered and then you've got your assessment for the overall topics yeah mm -hmm. and then you move on to your short-term plan now your short-term plan you have one of these for each topic 
right? So this is your short term plan. And in here, you've got letter writing. Just okay. So, yeah. So short term, we're talking just about writing then here. This just writing. Just about the individual subjects you're going to cover. Right. Yeah? So this is letter writing. In letter writing, this is going to be formal letter writing, informal letter writing, maybe applications can come in here as well, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And then you're going to have your assessment criteria, your learning objectives, formal letter writing, to understand mm -hmm. how to lay out a formal letter, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The language that should be used in a formal letter, how to mm -hmm. open it and close it, because in formal letter writing, there's a very yes. specific way you open yes. and close the letter. And mm -hmm. then your assessment criteria for those learning objectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. your next one might be um, informal letter. That can also include email, texting, completely mm -hmm. different styles of mm -hmm. language use. You know, uh, yes, yes. lol, you're not going to write love you lots or laugh out loud or whatever. You're just going to put lol mm -hmm. or uh, lyl if it's love you lots or whatever. You know, these are completely different. Uh, again, um, Twitter, completely different way. You have to write something. You know, you've got to, to tell your whole story in about seven words, you know, whatever on Twitter. Yeah. These are very, they require you to be hugely disciplined. Yeah? Uh, yeah, you might be able to write a book, but can you write a synopsis of your book for Twitter in about let twenty ask, words? Let me, let me ask you a like kind of a personal question, though. Is isn't that um, for uh, learners of English? Isn't that uh, like counterproductive? Because um, we're trying to teach them how to uh, write proper English, and if they go to these small abbreviations and stuff like that, no, no it's not because. Um, as far as they, they, are, they are going to use English, the only reason you learn a language is to use it, unless you're learning classical Greek sure. or Thinking, Latin yeah. for studying. You know? mm -hmm. Otherwise, the only reason to learn a language is to use it. They are going to be using um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, mm. texting, um, uh, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. They're going to be using these things far more than they're actually going to be having uh, a conversation with someone in their very best English. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. So as I keep telling uh, uh, Anil, and I told Aaron lots, when he would write things or he would talk to me, I would say Anil, and I say to Anil, Anil, what you've written is not wrong. It's fine. Everybody will understand you. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it on Facebook or Twitter or you're texting somebody, you can even make it less than that. But if you want your very best English and you want people to know that actually you have fluent English, yes, then and it, it, <laughs> it can be ameliorated. It can be made mm. better. Yeah. Mm. yeah? Mm. Uh, and yeah. this is something I keep saying. So actually, if you, if you want to learn Spanish, you yourself, you actually probably don't want to bother with classical Spanish. You just want to be able to speak it. Yeah? Absolutely. So you will take the shortcuts. You'll be a little bit like Aaron. You'll say, do you know what? I've got enough Spanish now. I can go out. I can hold a conversation. I can, I can order a, a, a meal in a restaurant. I can ask for directions. Uh, if I bump into somebody in, uh, in the museum, you know, I can have a chat with them. That's all. I don't need to know any more. Yeah? So I guess, um, I guess um, what I can do is I can uh, help establish or I can help them understand that there's a difference between using uh, that kind of texting language in a platform, which is fine. But when you're doing a story, story writing, which has to be published later on, that has to be grammatically correct and that has to be absolutely yeah. correct. English. What we say is until you can ride the bicycle really well, you can't start doing tricks. Yes. Yeah. So you're not going to start wheelies or standing on the handlebars or mm -hmm. trying to ride your bike over a tightrope until mm -hmm. you can really ride your bike well. Yeah. You need mm -hmm. to have a really good knowledge, understanding, and use of the language Absolutely. before <laughs> actually you can start texting and Facebooking and people will have any idea what you're doing. 
because you could text someone and it'd be absolute gobbledygook mm -hmm. because you don't have enough understanding of the language to be able to shorten it in any way that anybody understands. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, so it's like anything. You have to learn something properly in, a, in order to be able to take the short you know, in, and do In the order to um, mess it up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, when you read poetry or when you read books, you know, I said to Anil the other day, I said, Anil, one word is not a sentence. He said, oh. I said, you must have at least two words. He sat. Okay, it's not very interesting, but it's a sentence. But it's a sentence, yeah. Okay. You've got a person and you've got something they're doing. But sat on its own isn't a sentence, it's a command. Sit! Okay, you will sit. <laughs> it's not a sentence, yeah? Right. Uh, however, when you read books, you will find that authors will put it as though it was a sentence because they are hugely and highly experienced with the language. They Absolutely. have an extensive knowledge and understanding of the language. Absolutely. And yes, what yes. they want they want a particular effect when you read it. Yeah, that's so true. That's they so true. want the whole point of a writer writing something is to get is to give the reader an effect, to give the reader yeah. an experience. So yeah. same write, thing with my storytelling. <laughs> so if they write sit as one word, as a reader, you think, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> The character is really whatever, 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 you know, in line with whatever the story is and whatever the character is doing. You get it straight away. And mm -hmm. that's why the writer will do it. But they are knowledgeable enough to be able to play around with it and do that for effect. Yeah. And most of the time, the readers know uh, why it's there, why it's put there that way. You don't even think about it. When you're reading, you just, you're with it, you're there, you're like, oh, it's a, it becomes a page turner. Yeah. Because the writer <laughs> is using um, grammar for effect and right, vocabulary right. for effect, yeah? Right, right. But you don't right. even think about it. When you're watching a play, you're not thinking every minute, oh gosh, what a brilliant script, I'm, I'm really getting this. You're just <laughs> in there, frightened or shouting or saying, no, 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 don't open the door, or whatever it is. You know? Or you're disappearing okay. under your seat if it's a horror film or something. Oh, I did a horror story last uh, weekend. <laughs> but with, with when there's no visuals, as with a book, then the writer needs to be three or four or a hundred times more skilled because there's mm. no visuals. I mean, you can watch a horror film and there might be no speaking at all for, you know, two or three minutes. Mm. And you're still absolutely terrified because it's the visuals. It's a visual, uh, yeah. You're reading a book or listening to an audio play or a podcast, mm. the picture is here and mm. it's only created by the cleverness and the mm -hmm. magic that the writer is weaving with the words and yeah. with the way so, they use the punctuation. The, or, you know, if you can, you're able to make the sound of a door creaking, the sound of a door creaking or something like that, right. you know? Yeah, in your words, exactly. Right. You know, not, not orally, but actually make that sound, you know, say something like... Um, uh, she walks up the stairs and the, the door opens, something like that. Well, yes, or um, uh, the sound was like the bow on a violin that's out of tune something like that and then you immediately know oh that made that set my teeth on edge you know yeah whatever yes but you have to be incredibly experienced and advanced with your knowledge and use of a language to be able to do that you know first you have to ride the bike then you can start the wheelies <laughs> absolutely absolutely so have you read his story uh, the a folk tale that he came up with uh, the the one about the bride and the groom. Yes, yes, the lady. Yeah, yeah, yes, I edited it for him. Yes. yes, yes. So it's published now, uh, actually. So Ulrich sent me the link, and I read it today, and it's pretty, pretty good, pretty nice. 
Well, I hope it should be because I did the editing. So <laughs> if, if, the, if the English is rubbish, then I'm rubbish. <laughs> uh, I mean, I did leave one or two very Indian ways of writing English because it's his book, obviously, you know. I wasn't, right. ghost, I wasn't ghost writing it, I was editing okay. it. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are the uh, these Indian things that you left in there? Just out of my curiosity. Oh, I can't about. remember now. But if you read the book, you'll see, you'll, you'll know straight away. Okay. All yeah, right. I'm sure you will. Um, because there are some things that are a very Indian way of expressing things or mm -hmm. just an Indian way of composing a sentence, which actually a native English person would never do. Um, but it's his book and he's Indian. So, you know, as I say, that's the difference. If you ghostwrite it, then somebody tells you what they want to write, what they want written, and you write it down, but it's you writing it. If you edit it, you're editing what somebody has written and it has to stay as them, because it's, yeah. it's them, them who's written it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, stuff like that, I just left because uh, it's the same with Ulrika. I've just edited a book that Ulrika's written. And oh. Um, uh, you know, I made because obviously her English isn't native English, she's German, you know, and right. some of the sometimes she's she pretty writes good with the language, though. With Sorry, English. Her she's English pretty good pretty, with the English, though. Yeah, it, it's pretty good, it, it's mm -hmm. near native, but she makes some errors, and some of them are errors that Germans using English make, and oh. so if you just read it and you didn't know she was German, you would know by the way she okay. writes her sentence, because I see. In, in German, verbs come in a different place in the sentence. Right, so, I heard that. Yeah, um, and sometimes you can just see that. So I did edit those out because I knew she wanted it done as, you know, really good English. Okay. But at the end of the book, there's a whole section that is a dialogue with somebody else. All right. And that I didn't edit at all, except for a couple of spellings, because that is the two of them having a conversation. Having, having a conversation, yeah. Exactly, I get that. you know. Yeah. And, and it, it reads exactly like that. Two people, neither of whom have English as a first language, are having a conversation yeah. in English. Right, so and it has to be authentic. Yeah. Exactly. So I left that alone completely, yeah. So, yeah, and that's... What's, what's the name of this book? Oh... Uh, it's, it's about Janwa. It's something, it's the next skateboarding book. Um, I think it might even be called Barefoot Skateboarders. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I, think, I think she's due to publish it very soon anyway. It's a good read. It's interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah. So I'll definitely uh, give it a read when, once it comes out. Yeah, all right. Um, so thank you so much for your help. Um, You're welcome. This was, yeah, this was amazing, um, an amazing session for me. Um, and uh, I'll be incorporating the long-term, short-term plans and uh, uh, I'll see what I can do with the number of sessions and session-wise division. So I'll do that tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. And it, I mean, if you've got any questions or anything, you know, while you're working through, sometimes things come to us and you think, oh, Dan, you know, I should have asked that. I mean, just pop me an email. You've got my email address. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm, so I'm I'll, always happy to help. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop you an email then. Or, I mean, also, you can, are we Facebook friends? You could, F, you could Facebook message me as well. Yeah, so um, I'll find you immediately after this, and then I'll send you a friend request. Yeah, and then you can, always, you don't have to follow my, my Facebook page, but you can use it to send me a message. <laughs> oh, you mean use Messenger? Messenger, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, you are very welcome, and I hope that your father does get better or at least doesn't get any worse with his health <laughs> oh he is better and oh, he's doing well Excellent. he's doing well good thank good. you so much thank you're you very thank welcome you. namaste <laughs> bye. bye bye bye